Yep, left side's out too. Welcome back to the Lost Cause Ranch. As you can see, chassis in a little different location. You know what that means. We're hitting this guy on the ground today. That is our LS3 Defender 90. Complete new galvanized chassis, all new suspension. Pretty much new everything. So let's get the rest of the stuff assembled and get this guy on the ground today. We need to finish up those axles from the last video because it's hard to be a rolling chassis without those. Look at Lotus, almost back together. New clutch, fancy, fancy, on the road next week. So we got the axle back under here. We're gonna start getting the suspension bolted on. First, we need to get the shock mounts off the other Defender. So Ted's got the right side one off here. I'll get this guy all cleaned up and refinished and then we can bolt it on. Let's check how the left side is. Yep, left side's out too. I, I don't, you know, I don't know why it needed a chassis. Gonna patch that together. So we have our rear arms all coated. Looking fresh, matches the front ones, new radius arm bushings, and the upper A arm bushings. We're gonna get those pushed in. New upper ball joint, new hardware for all of it. Those guys assembled. Then we can locate the rear axle finally. So you might have caught there that I have the incorrect length bolt. It's about a half inch short. So went out and grabbed some temporary ones just so we can get this bolted in. We'll get the correct stuff ordered. And anyways, after this gets all blown back apart, we're gonna make a hardware list and it'll have all new fresh matching hardware for the final assembly. So we got the rear lower arms in, so the axle is roughly where it needs to be now. We're gonna get our brackets all mounted up. Those guys are sitting right here. We got some hardware, bushings for the shocks, shock mounts. So we'll get all these guys bolted up, get this upper arm in. Then we can start tossing some springs and stuff in. Then it'll be sitting on its own weight, which is kind of exciting. We got Ted over here assembling the front axle, getting the new swivel balls put on and all that good stuff. So shortly we'll have a front axle under this guy as well. Look at how nice that guy looks all put together. Got our fancy new axle shafts in there and everything, some new brake discs. That guy is just about ready to slide right under there. But first, we are going to get the rest of the rear in place. Then we get to see how tall this guy is. It's gonna sit quite a bit higher than it is at the moment because as you see, the spring is much, much taller than the space right there. Just a tiny bit. Well, would you look at that? First hole we try and do. Bolt doesn't quite go through. So. Guess we'll run this guy down. Maybe up. 
few little mushrooms. Let's try that. Much better. Let's try again. So I'm gonna pick up on the rear here and move those jack stands under here so we can get a little more height on the chassis. So when I was fighting on this one, as you can see the bolt just kind of slides in to a slotted piece. And being this is a galvanized chassis, when they dip these, they get some extra little like zinc stalagmites, stalactites, I don't know, whatever ones drop down. And I just had to file that out of the way. So this is gonna have to get cleaned up on quite a bit of this before we paint this guy. We're gonna probably do this guy in like a chassis black, just so it's nice and clean looking. But yeah, we got our rear arms in place, looking pretty snazzy. I like the gray against the black. It's gonna look pretty good, especially once the chassis is all black. So, springs, shocks, sit. So we got new spring seats and we got some spring retainers, so we're gonna these guys set in there. We're gonna have to sky the rear to be able to slip everything in and bolt it all on in one shot. All right, so apparently with the porn power, we did not spread these enough with the urethane bushings. They are still too fat to slide in. What we're gonna do here is we got this little contraption. Got a bolt, thread the nut all the way on, and then we're gonna slip this guy in the bracket, and then we'll thread this nut out, which is gonna put pressure and push the ears out, and we should be able to slide that guy right in. So there's your top tip of the day. Just a, a nut and a bolt. Do a little spready spready. Got a Defender chassis sitting on its own weight on wheels and tires. That, that rolling it under with the springs attached didn't quite work out as well as planned. So probably just do radius arms only and leave the springs till after next time. But we figured we'd try something different and see if we could just swing it all in, but it, it didn't work. The chassis was too high, too much angle on the rear radius arms to get it in easily. So radius arms on would have slid right in but figured we'd give her a shot don't know until you try but uh we're gonna get the shocks on this guy and then we'll wheel this guy out and we'll see what it looks like as a rolling chassis
and it is starting to look pretty snazzy. We're getting into the part of the build where you actually see some progress. The first little bit collecting everything and getting everything prepped and ready is kind of not that exciting in terms of development. But now we're getting to see what we may look like in the future. These are just some roller wheels off another Defender we had. What we're dealing with here is some factory brand new rear links, all new bushings, but we have a two inch Old Man Emu lift front and rear sitting in their new shock towers. The axles are all rebuilt with fresh new parts. So you can probably gather the theme on this thing. It is gonna be a very new, very fresh Defender build. There's not gonna be a whole lot used off that old rusty one. This one right here, it's kinda in sorry shape. We will use some of the good bits off it, but the majority is going to be new, and this is gonna be a pretty slick little guy, 430 horsepower with a bunch of factory fresh stuff. Look at a Raptor, R. We're probably gonna have about an inch taller tire than this on it and we are undecided as to go with like a narrow, tall, skinny, or if we're gonna go with a little wider wheel and tire. That will be determined in the future. We have to line up our steering bits here. That one was a right-hand drive one. This left-hand drive, we're in the US, so that's a little more convenient. So that's part of the reason why we just used a donor set of Discovery axles. So we have the correct left-hand drive spindles, knuckles, whatever you want to call them. But that leaves us with, we need a left-hand drive steering gear. So we'll have to get that. Then, no, no, turn, not just roll. Big monumental moment there. Now we're left with a gaping hole. Let's get that bit ready to go in. We got the LS3 that needs to get in there. We're gonna uncrate it, get this, right there, get the 6L80E out. Slam those two together and get it ready to go in there so we can make some mounts or something. I suppose it's probably not going to just bolt in. They didn't come with those? Huh? We got the fancy new torque converter in there and that is the nicest torque converter hold down plate I have ever seen. When you buy them from a junkyard, it's just little, not quite, not quite as fancy as that. But first we're gonna get the flex plate onto the engine. We got our package of bolts here, torque wrench there. This part has been specifically designed for off highway application only. Sad day, no more highway use for the Land Rover. LADE bolted up to the LS3. This guy looks pretty ready to drop into the chassis, but you're gonna have to wait until the next video for that where we will make up some mounts and have a 430 horsepower V8 sitting in the Defender chassis. Appreciate you guys watching. We will catch you on the next one.